Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Blender. And today we're going to be taking a look at creating this moody, atmospheric, monster foot scene. So there's quite a bit of work to do here and I'm going to split this tutorial into two parts and in this first part we are going to be looking simply at the modelling and it probably is a good idea if you watch my subdivision tutorial before you embark on this because it'll help to explain some of the concepts. So anyway let's make a start on this. So here we are in the default blender scene. Let's disable the camera and the light. Let's select the cube and let's move it up one meter on Z and then control A to apply that location transform. So everything's back at zero. So what we're going to be doing here is modeling this monster foot using this default cube. And we are going to be using reference images in order to do that. So let's load up those reference images. So first of all, I'm going to come to the side view. So that's three on the number pad. So the right orthographic view there and I'm going to add image reference and navigate to my reference images folder and use the one called side reference and you can see that that's come in correctly because we loaded this up in the side view. If we'd loaded it up in any other view, especially the camera view, all these numbers would be wrong. So all we need to, really need to do is just to move it up into position. So let's just scroll in Z so it's lining up with the bottom of the cube. You can see this line is lining up here. And we also need to line up that blue line. So I'm going to scroll in Y till that blue line lines up as well. So as I say, it's not too critical, but you know, you might as well just get it fairly close. So then let's look at the top view. So seven for the top view, top orthographic. Let's add image and reference and let's select the top reference. So this line here needs to match the blue line. So let's just do that. So we need to move it on Y till that matches. So that's in line with that. So this line here is lining up with that blue line on the, the top there. Let's turn off the cube just when we look at it. And there's one more view we're going to go for, and that's the front view. So one for the front orthographic view, add image and reference, and we'll select front reference and load that up. So let's just see where our floor is. So he needs to come up quite a bit on Z to around there. And there you go. You, 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 we've already got a kind of sense of how this is going to work. And we've got a very good reference for building the, the object. And as I hope you're going to see, working with reference images is a really good workflow. It really helps to take the guesswork out of modeling complex objects. So let's start with the side view. Let's open these up so you can actually see what they're, they're called. Let's just turn off the top and the front while we work. Let's turn our cube back on again and let's hit three for the side orthographic view. So I'm going to hit control space bar so we get the maximum space for our modeling. It's always a good idea to give yourself a nice lot of space to do this in. So let's select the cube and let's come to edit mode and we're going to be in vertex mode here. So let's turn on X-ray mode. So that's Alt Z. And then let's select the Move tool. Let's grab these top row of vertices and drag it up so it's level with the top of our guide like that. Let's grab these back vertices and just move them in so it's level with that outside edge there. Let's grab these and move it in so it's sort of level with that. So then what we're going to do is we're going to grab the loop cut tool and we're going to add in the loops that you can see. So holding down the loop cut tool, we're just going to drag it till it matches that one there. Okay, let's hold down the loop cut tool, drag it till it's there. Holding down the loop cut tool, drag it till it's there. So quickly going through here and just adding in all these loops here. And then we might as well also add in the vertical loops as well. So let's have one here and one here. 
So then we're going to do a little bit of tidying up just so the they match a little bit more. So let's select the scale tool and just scale these in a little bit like this. Scale this a little bit and scale this a little bit. You get the idea. We're going to do a little bit of moving with the move tool as well. So just get a rough sort of shape like this to start us off. Then let's select the move tool. We can move this row of vertices across like that. This one across like this. Uh, this is pretty good. We can take this vertex and move it out like that. Bearing in mind we're in X-ray mode, we're actually picking up both sets of vertices when we drag around any one vertex like that. So we're affecting the back as well as the front. So you can see how I'm just, just roughly lining it up with the guide like this. So let's select this set of vertices here. So it's everything up to that point there. And let's use the extrude tool to extrude it out to where we see that next loop there. And then just move that down a little bit till it lines up a bit better. Just grab these and tidy it up. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more so we can get a better sense of this. Just tidying all of this up. Again, let's select this row of vertices. Let's use the extrude tool to bring it across to the next loop there. And again, just do a bit of tidy up. And then select this row of vertices. Again, use the extrude tool and extrude it forward to here. And I'm going to extrude it one more time like that while we're at it, just to speed things up. Again, let's zoom right in so we can see exactly what's going on here. And you've got the idea by now. I'll be speeding through this. So I'm stopping before the talons because we'll, we'll be dealing with those in a separate operation. And let's just now come to object mode and let's add a subdivision modifier. So modifiers and subdivision surface. And you can already see how that's giving us a much more rounded effect than the blocky object that we had before. So let's just increase the levels, viewport levels and the render levels to three in each case. So then I think we probably need to work on this front view. So what we can actually do is a quick little tip here about the reference images. We can actually get them to only turn on when the relevant orthographic is selected. So if we come to this view here uh, with our side reference selected, we can turn off the perspective. And now you'll see that in perspective view, we don't actually see it. But if we go to our side view, it turns back on again. So let's do that with the others as well. So top reference, let's turn off the perspective. Front reference, let's turn off the perspective. And now you can see that as we sort of zoom around, we don't see them. But if we go to a particular view, actually, let's turn them back on again, because now we can use that. That's to our advantage. So that's the top view. And this is the front view and the relevant reference image turns on, but turns off in perspective view. So just a handy little tip there. So let's now concentrate on the front view. So one for the front view like that. Zoom in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to again select my cube and then let's switch into edit mode. And then I'm going to turn on the X mirror here. You see that little butterfly there. I'm going to turn on the X. And that means that if we adjust a value on one side, it's mirrored over on the other. So again, let's work in, in vertex mode and let's just bring in the profile so it actually matches. So let's grab these. We're still in the move tool, so I can move that in there. You can see how this is working. It's, it's really nice just to be able to adjust one side and the other kind of follows along with it. So just setting up this profile like this, I think that's pretty good. So in the front view, let's add some vertical loops as well. You can see we've got those here. We're still in edit mode and let's come to the loop cut tool and let's add a single loop cut in the middle. Let's come to here and select four for the number. And you can see those are pretty much lined up perfectly with what we had in the guide. So that's quite good. So now we can actually look at making the claws. Let's come out of X-ray mode. So what I want to do here is come to faces mode. I want to select this face, this face and this face. So that's holding down the shift key to do that. Let's come to our side view and we can now extrude out those talons. So let's select the extrude tool 
and let's extrude till we get to here. And then let's extrude again till we get to the end there. So now we've got these sort of sausage fingers. What we're going to do is we're going to scale down these end faces. So I'm going to do this with the S scale tool. So S 0.01. You'll notice that's scaled both sides because we're still in X mirror mode. And then let's scale this one S 0.01. So now we've got our front talons. They need a little bit of work. So let's come to the top view, I think. So first of all, let's switch back on X-ray mode. So Alt Z, and let's come to vertex mode, grab these vertices here. And so we're in our rotate tool and we're just gonna rotate those around like that. So they kind of point outwards a bit. And let's grab these vertices here. Let's come to the scale tool, scale them in just a little bit. Notice again rather nicely there, following along on both sides. And let's just scale this one in a bit as well, just refine that profile. So that's quite nice there. So let's now come to our side view. And obviously we need to create this uh, hooked effect. Still we're in extra mode. Let's grab all these vertices here. Let's come to the move tool and move them down like so. And maybe let's grab these and just move them back a bit, I think but back and up like that, just so we're getting a more pronounced arch there on the, on the hook. So then let's come to the scale tool. Let's turn off X-ray mode for this. And let's come over actually to the modifier. And I want you to notice that we've got a final button here. Actually, let's look, look at all the buttons. Well, this is the bypass everything. This is the display and edit mode toggle. And this allows us to sort of see the final result in edit mode and it's quite handy because it's it's easier to to work this way so i actually do quite like the way that's turned out it's not quite what i had in mind with my plan but i think i'm going to stick with it so a happy accident i think so let's just do, do a bit of tidying up now first of all i think we need to adjust the fact that the the foot itself is very square as you can see so we're still in X mirror mode, which is good. So we're going to come to edge mode. I'm going to select that edge there and I'm going to control select that one there. And you can see that it grabs the intervening edges. And I'm going to come to the move tool and I'm going to move this back like that. And you can see that it rounds off the profile. Again, it's doing it on both sides because we've got the mirror turned on. Let's also do it with this back edge here. So, so let's select that one there and this one here. So holding down the control key to, to grab the loop like that. And then just let's have a look at how we're doing. Let's just move it in like that. You can see this nicely rounds off the back of the leg like that. And we could adjust this loop here as well. So if I alt click this loop, it selects the whole thing all the way around, as you can see. And I can just move that in a bit like that. And let's do the same with this one. Alt click that and move it back a bit. Just helps with the profile. So I think this is actually not bad. What we need to do also is to create this back talon. Let's do that now. Let's select the faces mode and select this face here. Sort of, you can see where it is, it's that row there. Let's select three for the side view. Let's select the extrude tool. Let's extrude it once, let's extrude it again, and let's extrude it a third time. So with this face selected, I'm going to hit S and 0 0.01 to refine that to a point. I'm going to zoom right in so we can refine this. I'm going to select the move tool with this selected and just drag that down like that. And actually that profile is probably not too bad. Let's come into edges mode and grab this loop here by alt clicking on it maybe just move it in like that. Alt click this one and maybe just move it up a bit like that. So we've matched our guide pretty well there, I think. Uh, I don't want to get too carried away. There is one other bit of modeling that I would like to do though, and that's to create a little bit of a less flat top to the foot. So I can do that by coming into faces mode. Again, we're still in the mirror mode. So anything I do on the one side will affect the other side as well. So I'm going to grab this one and this, actually let's go all the way to there. Uh, so that's control clicking it to get that complete uh, set of faces. And then I'm going to sort of drag it down like that quite a bit. 
and then I'm going to select this row of faces and drag it up like that. And that's given us some more interesting kind of profile. Probably need to do a bit more work on it. Let's maybe grab this set of edges here. So one, two, three like that. And I'm just going to move it in a bit like that and maybe up a bit as well. And you'll see what I'm trying to do there is I'm just trying, trying to give a little bit more st structure to the top of the foot so it's not quite so flat. And I think that's that's looking a bit better. And I might actually just come back into faces mode and grab this set there, those three, and move it forward to make more of a kind of a, a shin bone there. Can you see that's that's working better, I think. So I think for the purposes of overall modeling, we're doing pretty well. I just want to come to the top view. I think I want to extend this middle claw. So again, make sure we're in X-ray mode. Let's switch into edges mode and grab these edges here. And let's just drag it forward. I know it's not in the reference, but I want a longer middle claw and I think that's going to be nicer. So there you go, that's that's looking much more menacing. So we're very close to the end of this part of the tutorial, but we need to do something pretty important. So I'm going to turn off X-ray mode. And what we need to do is we need to set a different material for the talons and the main claw. So we obviously need to come back into edit mode. And let's just turn off the symmetry, the mirroring. So we need to be in X-ray mode and faces mode and we're going to grab these and these and these and let's do the same on the back we need to grab this talon there so we've now got all the talons selected and we can come over to shading make sure we're in edit mode here come over here to the material click on the plus sign here to add a new material and click on new to make a new material. Let's make the base color kind of black like that. And then let's click assign. And now the, the talons have got our new material. So let's rename that as talons. And let's select the other material and rename that as claw. And we can just change the color of this claw. So let's go for something like this, make it nice and dark. We want minimum specular, maximum roughness there. Let's come back to our talons material. Less roughness, more specular. Whoops, more specular like that. So they're a little bit shiny. So let's now come to modeling and just look through the camera view. Come out of edit mode, select the camera and let's just move it down on Z like that. So it's a bit more framed up. And what I want to do is be able to do a sort of turntable view on the camera so we can we can easily see all around it. So let's add empty plane axes. So this is a new empty called O3. So let's call it camera rotate. And let's take the camera and holding down the shift key, drag it into the empty. So you'll see it's now parented to the empty. So we can grab camera rotate. We can come to its Z rotation. And it means we can just rotate around and get a feel for how this is looking from various different angles. So now if I press F12, we get a rendered view. We can still see the polygons here a little bit. So we can fix that, as you probably know, by selecting the object, right click and selecting Shade Smooth. And now if we do F12, those polygons have gone away. So quite a bit of work, but the fun starts now and we can start to turn this or the sort of Monsters Inc looking thing into something much more moody and menacing in the next part. So thanks very much indeed for watching. Catch you then.